praise the Lord. Somebody will say, what is the need of an English drill, grammar drill, in a spiritual service this morning? There are three cases I will mention, then I'll go to the grammatical aspects of English language that is to help us this morning. One, a classmate of mine knew how to dig these heaps, make yam heaps very well, to the extent that when he found one place that was very badly cultivated, the heaps were too bad, he said, I'm not going to look that place, a space of 100 meters. He turned his face this way until he had finished passing that place. But there are too many grammatical errors done here in the shepherd, everywhere on campus. So I refuse to be that kind of person, to go away, look away from too many grammatical errors that are there. So I take an action. The second preamble, the second that thing that made me come up with this thing is that in the class when I was very elderly among my linguistic students, as I entered the university in 2014, they decided I should be the course rep so that lecturers can respect me. And I took the mandate and they respected it because I was older than some of the lecturers. So they respected me when I'm talking to them for the class. But something happened. I used to sit in front. One day I came late to an, a French class. So I was sitting about six seats down the road. So the lecturer, French lecturer was on the board writing something. He wrote a French sentence, and to move away from the sentence, his occipital part was hit badly by that plywood. And it removed, the angle up removed and hit on his head and he remained there. Because cost rape was not in front, I was something there. The people moped at him like that. Until I walked, it took up to 10 seconds that I walked fast from there and came and pressed the board when it rested, then somebody else came and helped and we fixed it back. So I said, if that is how people who are well equipped don't do something, there are smaller, smarter young men, but they didn't move until I moved there. Then I will move something in the church and show something where people are not showing. Hello. Then, Acts chapter 20 verse 20, has Paul saying he did not keep anything that was profitable unto them. That is what I'm doing. All right, what is grammar? I thought somebody is to project it so that it will be easier to, to, because I'm running through some points. First of all, what is grammar? In my experience of teaching grammar, I discovered that I teach English language in SS2. I asked them what is grammar and they didn't know. I said, what was the person doing? Who taught them grammar in English language SS1? Grammar is an aspect of the curriculum. When did it do for WIAC now? So how to explain that grammar, as the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary defines it, is the rules in a language for changing the form of words and joining them into sentences. That is to say, grammar is the rules, basic rules of speaking or writing a language. And what are the rules? They are kept in the knowledge in the mental dictionary of the person who is a native speaker of that language, which means every language has its own grammar. Ige the mom, born and never gone where school is, can correct your Ige the language, but you say that is not acceptable. That's not Ige the language. You have spoiled Ige the language. Your sentence is ungrammatical. And so the same thing. If a person learning native language will say, Nyare nguga, a correct a tea, native speaker of tea will know that all right, this guy is from outside. He has not known that. Ngu actually is a word to be. It's for be. But when you say nyare, you don't use ngu, you use ki. So they will mark that person on grammatical. What needs to say nyare kiga? Because you don't know. Now, I'm saying there are two areas that people don't know and they are using English wrongly. That's what I want to show here. Number one, there's a very wrong use of a Adverbal phrase used to. When people say, I used to go. If you say, I used to go to Adipo, it means you no longer go to Adipo these days. But when you talk, somebody is saying something that he does every day, and we say, I used to go to Urukum. I used to come to. If you say that is wrong, used to, as we learn in the things I used to do, I do them no more. 
the things I used to do. That means I do them no more. That's why used to is correct. If we hear it used to, it is for something that you are no more doing. That's the point. All right? So don't say used to. I discovered that our primary school foundation was better. I was taught in primary school that in a poem, this is the way we sweep up floor, we sweep up floor, we sweep up floor. This is the way we sweep up floor every in the morning. This is the way we brush our teeth, we brush our teeth, we brush our teeth. That made us know that if it's something you do perpetually, top up to the habitual tense, you just say, I go, I come, I do. That is, you do it every day. But now people don't know it. Hello. The next thing I want to say is, I can boldly say this is the most common grammatical error in English language. I've even seen it on campus here. The agreement of subject and verb. Subjects of a verb are normally three persons. First person, plural. First person, singular. First person, plural. Second person, singular. Second person, plural. Third person, singular and plural. Now, the error is that people can even say, I don't like that. They don't know where S comes to a verb. The only correct use of S to a verb in the habitual tense or present simple tense is when it is preceded by a subject that is third person singular. If it's I go, you say I go to school, we go to school, you singular go to school, you plural go to school, they go to school, them and Amina go to school. But when you come to she, she goes to school. That is it. But people don't know that. He said, God have many children. God is third person singular. So you can't say have. God has, has. So every time a subject is third person singular, the verb that follows as the habitual is going to carry an S. That's why you say he is, not he are. But if it's they, they are. Right now when I was coming, I wanted to see whether I would say that common error. They say the families of that and those of that together with this church cordially invites. That is a plural subject, my friend. It is they. So you can't say invites anymore. If it's one family, then it can be cordially invites. That's it, standing for that one family. But if it is three families like that, it should be invite. So when I came, there is a morning for one departed uh, staff. I wanted to catch one so that I would say, even today I caught it. But they were correct. They said the directorate of ICT, Bernard State University. That is singular. Mons Christopher Achi. As we well have seen it, they would have said Mon. Or when they say faculty of this, department of that, entire members of the department, all together. Mons. That's what I say. It is wrong. Now, finally, let me put it that people who taught us English in primary school were very good. They were primary seven certificate holders. What I was taught is that in primary elementary science, my teacher in primary three taught us what is a plant. So a plant is a living thing which grows out of the soil and afterwards it dies. From primary three I knew that when you are talking about something that always happens, you, if it is it, you put dies. Then he asked her, what is hamatan? He said, hamatan is a dry, cold wind which comes from the Sahara Desert. It begins in November and ends in March. So that guy, primary seven, knew it. So what am I doing here? If you are in first level or final year and you don't know that when it is third person singular, you should use the verb in the habitual tense with an S. Learn it now. What have we said so far? Used to is past. Don't say, I used to go. I used to come. If you say used to come, it means you are no more coming. That's one thing I've learned. The second one was that third person singular subjects are the only people that have an S to a verb. You cannot say it rains in October. It rains in October. Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir. One more clap. I hope I said it correctly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank God for giving us uh, people.